Dustin, we're continuing our conversation discussing the Ten Commandments and obviously how they impact our lives today. Commandment number eight, thou shall not steal. Obviously, that seems like a pretty straightforward commandment, but um, as I listen to the message, you realise that when you unpack it, there's a lot more to it. So our question today is, is there more to theft than theft? Well, I think there is. Uh, <laughs> this would be one of those commands, like most of them, to be honest, where we let ourselves off the hook really easily and we think, well, you know, I'm no shoplifter. Yeah. And so this doesn't apply to me. We we kind of have a stereotype of what a thief looks like. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. Um, sack though. over the shoulder, yeah. a little mask and uh, creeps around at night, a little bit unkept, disheveled. That's kind of the thief. And uh, But there's actually more to theft than theft. But before we get there... Mm. You, in a previous life, yes. were a news reporter. You've yes. got some good stories on this. So. Yeah, and I spent many years as the crime and court reporter, so I feel like I've seen my fair share of like shoplifting, particularly on a quiet day. Obviously, this was regarded as lower-end sort of um, criminal activity, but I had to do a crime bulletin where you put together some vision and they try to, you know, put the message out there of whatever they're focusing on. And um, it was a pretty quiet week. And so I went to the cop shop, as we like to call it, and they gave us some vision of this guy who'd gone into this shop and he'd literally run in and had armfuls of T-shirts and just sprinted out. Um, so it was pretty brazen. But the interesting thing was when I went to the police the next week, um, I asked them, oh, you know, did you catch, did you catch your runner? And they said, yeah, actually his grandma called in to the police and dobbed in. His grandson. That is a, <laughs> even if you break this commandment, your grandma, your grandma knows about is it. Is watching yeah. exactly. Um, God or your grandma yeah. will get you. Yeah, or even like I was surprised by huge like plasma screen televisions. People literally put it in a trolley, walk out of the store, brazen as anything, you know. And so I, I was always surprised by people just looked like an average mother, mother or father or son or you know. Yes. It's funny how we have this stereotype, but actually, yeah. Well, there's um. There's more to theft than simply shoplifting in that sense. So um, in the full message, we talk about the fact that there's the theft of time, uh, which is a common form of theft, just rocking up to work late, mm. leaving early, extended lunch breaks. Uh, well, that's actually stealing time that someone purchased from you yeah. by virtue of a salary. Which I'd never thought about before. Um, no, but I noticed you arrived on time <laughs> finally today, which is great. Um, there's the theft of reputation when you gossip about people, uh, the theft of not returning things you've borrowed, the theft of not paying back, like paying invoices. Like if you're a business operator, one of the biggest headaches is when people don't pay their invoices on time. Yeah. What's a form of theft? Yeah. And, and the flow on effect that has for so many people that are waiting on just that. A hundred percent. And so what if God in his wisdom actually knows what is most conducive to flourishing relationships and communities? And that is where we not just abstain from stealing things, but we also honour one another's possessions, honour one another's um, money, and um, that actually builds healthier relationships. Like nothing spoils a relationship like an unpaid loan, right? Or an unpaid or an unreturned belonging. Yeah, it's amazing how those things can spoil. Like long-term relationships mm. get spoiled because someone didn't pay back that three thousand mm. dollars. And I remember you in the message talking about this and immediately I was thinking about my bookshelf and the amount of books that I actually need to return to people that have yeah, good yeah. faith lending Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you lend a book, just know that it's gone. Mm. No one ever returns books. No. Um, one of the other, um, I guess, big ideas that has helped my thinking on this and I found really interesting while studying this commandment is that um, the Hebrew idea of theft is not just taking something that doesn't belong to you. Yeah. But the Hebrew idea of theft is also withholding something that is yours, which could be used to bless somebody else. And, and this really spreads the net a lot wider because when we think about thou shalt not steal, to be honest, most of us probably think, well, not me, move on to the next one. Um, however, all of us have been given gifts, talents, resource, opportunity, and, and yet how often we fail to use what we have to contribute or to add value to others. And so theft in the, the biblical idea is about far more than just taking. Yeah. Theft is about failing to bring or failing to contribute. And when you put it that way, mm. maybe all of us yeah. could improve in this area. Yeah, it's not as simple as just, you know, I've taken a Snickers bar. It's actually, 
yeah, it goes into so many areas of your life. A hundred percent. And and God knows that um, the best way to have healthy homes, the best way to have healthy friendships, mm. the best way to have a healthy culture in your workplace is if we have more and more people who are committed to being contributors and bringing their part to the table, yeah. then we have people who are committed to taking and getting and making withdrawals then you're going to have a healthier home, healthier marriage, healthier workplace. Yet how often we go through life and we go through our week with a mindset of what am I getting out of this? Mm. Oh, I'm going to leave that workplace because I wasn't getting much out of it. I'm going to leave that church because I wasn't getting much out of it. Right. Uh, I'm going to skip on this marriage because I don't feel like my needs are being fulfilled and I'm not getting enough out of it. That's the spirit behind this commandment. Mm. A, a, a mindset that looks at the world through the lens of, what can I take? What can I withdraw? What can I get? Um, that's not the way to build joyful, flourishing um, environments in our world. And, and so maybe this command is not just about abstaining from shoplifting. Right. Though if you are, you should stop it. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe it's actually about having the best possible environments we could in our homes, friendships, workplaces, churches, communities, and ultimately in our nations. Yeah. Um, on that thought, there's there's a great message that, that I've watched by Pastor Andre Olivia uh, that he preached at Calvary. In fact, um, we'll link to it on our um, YouTube channel. And uh, he preached this message and just the title communicates the idea. The message is called Makers, Not Takers. Right. And um, if you can just, that to me is the best summary of this commandment that um, the most meaningful way for us to live and the best way that we reflect the nature of God is by having the attitude of being makers yeah. rather than having an attitude of being takers. And you always you know, feel so much more fulfillment when you've been able to contribute to something as opposed to, you know, what do I get out of it? 100%. What's interesting, though, is that the media and some politicians like to stoke the fire of grievance right. within us. Yeah. And why? Because it gets them elected. Mm. Uh, they can say things like, well, you know, the problem is those people, you are entitled to more of their stuff. They should be paying your student loans or they should be giving more of their profits to you. Right. And it stokes the fire of grievance and it gets people to vote for you because mm. the promise of free stuff will always get a vote. Yeah. But, but again, if we've got an economy or a nation where you've got more people committed to taking then you've got contribute, uh, committed to contributing and to making, well, that nation, that economy is going to collapse. Mm. That's on the macro scale, but you could apply that to a home. You could apply that to a marriage. You've got two parties in a marriage, but but if both are committed to taking from the marriage mm. instead of contributing, well, it's not going to be long until that marriage self-destructs. Yeah. Um, apply that principle in every sphere of society and you see the wisdom of God that, if we all have a mindset to contribute, to add value, not what can I get, but what can I give, yeah. whether it's encouragement, whether it's my gift, whether it's um, giving charitable donations to people in need, whatever it is that God's put in my hand, could I use it to bless somebody else? Mm. That's going to make for a far better world and the kind of world that I think we would all want to be a part of. Oh, for sure. And it's interesting because we've just previously spoken about, um, you know, what's so wrong with an affair. Adultery is obviously all about taking. Mm -hmm. Marriage is about giving. And mm -hmm. it's the same with this, you know, thou shalt not steal. It's not just about taking, but it's about what we can give yes. in all spheres. Yes. I think um, we get this commandment wrong when we think about this commandment as an event instead of thinking about it as an attitude. Right. So, so like we, we think about the event of stealing. Mm. But no, it's actually about an attitude. Either you are going through life with an attitude to take mm. or you're going through life with an attitude to contribute. Yeah. And the Christian faith tradition would say that the reason we want to go through life with an attitude to serve, to contribute, is because ultimately this is the nature of God, that God is a self-giving God. Uh, Jesus said, nobody takes my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord for God. So loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And so we would see that this command actually is linked back to the nature of God, mm. that God is self-giving. God volunteers himself mm. to serve others. And so that's why, as you point out, Corinne, the most meaningful, satisfying life is when we reflect the nature of God by being self-giving, 
volunteering ourselves to serve other people. Yeah, great. It's a great attitude to have. And if any of you missed the message, it'll be on our podcast and our YouTube as we continue to delve into the Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm.